hey guys welcome to digital screeny channel on youtube and if you haven't already done so please hit the subscribe button right now in this video let's have a quick look at how we can perform back of the envelope calculation for memory size of your deep learning model and this can be very important especially if you have seen out of memory errors in the past you see that because you are trying to put too much data into your memory that it cannot handle whether it is GPU or CPU, obviously you need to push enough data that it can handle. If you are lucky enough to have 24 gigs or even 48 gigs of GPU, well, I feel jealous, first of all. And uh, even here, I should say there will be restrictions, of course. You cannot just work with, uh, uh, let's say, a batch of 32 4K by 4K images. So how do we know that? What is the limit? How can we calculate? And this video is about that. Just doing this calculation to get a ballpark idea of what image sizes should you be working with. So if you have 4K by 4K images, you can come up with a strategy if that doesn't fit the GPU that you have. The strategy can be typically it is cropping your images, but if you have multiple GPUs maybe and you're working on Linux, maybe you can do some sort of a parallel processing. But this video is not about doing that. This video is about just doing a simple calculation. First using by hand and then using just a few lines of Python code that I'll share with you. Okay, first of all, let's uh, focus on a model that we probably are familiar with, which is VGG16. Very simple to understand. It's just a uh, uh, simple convolutional plus dense layers for classification. And the input image is, uh, uh, if you take the standard uh, VGG16, input image is of size 224 by 224 by 3. And the first convolutional layer generates 64 uh, fil uh, features feature maps, I should say, and the next one generates 64, and the next one generates 128. And what does that mean? It's generating 64 feature maps. Well, it's taking your 224 by 224 image and copying it 64 times. So it takes 64 times more memory than handling a 224 by 224 image. Well, granted that the input image is three channels, so it's 64 by three times, right? I mean, somewhere around 21 times more memory for each of these and then as the size goes down of course the required memory goes down but then you can see uh, that the number of filters are also increasing so let's go ahead and just remove these dense layers which is the fully connected layers and only look at the convolutional layers to make our math a bit easier okay so what are we trying to achieve here so here let's look at the vgg16 and look at three scenarios one using an input of 256 by 256 by 3. The other one is 1K by 1K. All three channels, RGB channels, color color images. And finally, the 4K image. And 4K, I'm taking the, the uh, television definition of 4K. It's not 4 by 4. It's actually 3.8 uh, thousand by 2.1 thousand by three channels. Okay, so this is the goal. And one thing you have to remember is all the data that gets stored, the feature maps that get stored are all float 32 which means uh, each K needs four bytes. So whatever the math you do, 256 multiplied by 256 multiplied by three multiplied by four, because that's how much space it actually uh, uh, requires. So now let's look at, uh, I'm, I'm just printing the model here, VGG16. So it's going from top to bottom here, and then the continuation is right there. Yeah, so we start with an image that's 256 by two by three, and then you recognize this, right? Let's look at the output, 64 another 64, now the size goes down to 128, 128, 64, and so on. So how do we calculate this? So first, let's look at the input right there, yeah? So here, let's multiply 256, 256, three, and we multiply it by four, because these are, again, like I said, flow 32, which comes up to 0.75 megabytes, we can easily handle. Again, all of this calculation for one single image. And if you have a batch of 16, multiply this by 16, okay? And the next one, when you do that, you get 16 megabytes and so on. And as you can see, you need a lot of memory for this part. And as you go towards the end of it, not as much. This is typical for most of these, uh, most of these deep learning models anyway. Okay, this is for 256. And when you add all of these, you get 76 megabytes. This is where we can fit this in our CPUs, in our GPU, even with four GB RAM, uh, I mean, memory and so on. So that's fine. Now let's go to 
1K by 1K, 1024 by 1024. So for single image, 12 megabytes, single float image, right? And the next one, 256 megabytes. As you can see, there's a big jump right there. And you keep going and go ahead and add all of these, you get 1.2 GB. So if you would like to work with 1K by 1K images, then for single image, it's 1.2 GB. So if you want to load a batch of images, like 16 images, then that is like 16 GB, right? I mean, uh, or even more than that, by, uh, by the way. But so you're probably okay if you have uh, 24 GB or even 48 GB. Maybe 24 GB is not enough because there is a lot of other overhead in addition to this, which we'll see in a second. But this is a, uh, gives you a good idea of at least you cannot just work with 4 GB or 12 GB if you want to work with 1K by 1K and a batch size of 16. That's the idea. Now let's go to 4K images, which is 3840 multiplied by 2160 by 3. So for single image, it's 95 megabytes. And as you can imagine, it scales pretty fast right there. It's two gigs to store just one feature map right there. Yeah, uh, I mean, one, one uh, layer information with 64 feature maps and so on. You keep going and then uh, these are all pretty bulky numbers. When you add them, it adds to 9.6 gigs. That's for one single image. So if you have uh, 12 gigs of GPU, a maximum of batch size would be one for you. That's it. Okay, so let me summarize this and then let's jump to the code to, to do this calculation, uh, you know, uh, using Python. So uh, in summary, the more the larger the image, of course, the more uh, memory, but then you see how big the memory is. For 1K, it's 1.2 GB and for 4K, it's 9.6 GB. This is the reason why you see most of the uh, deep learning tutorials that you see online, the CIFAR datasets and others, they work with 32 by 32 or uh, or 64 by 64 type of images, especially if you are, uh, this is just for VGG16, right? So if you think about GAN, like generative adversarial networks or even more complex uh, uh, models, then uh, it, it can get pretty messy. It'd be interesting for you to plot these out and then see exactly, or do the calculation and see exactly how much memory it takes over there. But for GANs, you absolutely have to find a way to do parallel processing using multiple GPUs. Uh, just, just with, uh, you know, uh, even 256 by 256 can be a bit challenging for, uh, for GAN training. Okay, uh, so this reflects uh, only the forward pass and the backward pass will consume similar amount of memory. So almost double that. And it's just for feature maps. Now think of parameters. You have weights and biases and they need to be stored in memory. And they don't take up too much room, but they do take up some room, right? So for example, if you look at this network, you have 14.7 million parameters. This is nothing. You have uh, models where you have like, uh, 500,000 parameters, but this is this is decent size, 14.7 million parameters. What does that mean? 14.7 multiplied by four, because again, these are all float, divided by your 1024, 1024 to convert this into, into megabytes. So it comes up to about 56 megabytes. That's not bad. On top of that, you have some uh, additional requirements. Uh, for example, uh, to store the gradient and momentum, like in Adam, for example, you have the momentum term. So all of that is uh, required. I'm not sure why I put uh, 527. This should be probably 56 right there. Uh, apologies for that. But again, the point I'm trying to make is you do need additional memory for this uh, information. Again, in addition to that, you have memory required to hold the temporary data. For example, I assume you're loading data using your uh, data generator. So then you have your images and if you have masks, those need to be stored in batches in memory. So that also takes extra room. But this crude or rough calculation, I should say, should give you an idea of what GPU you cannot use. Like if you have 12 GB, uh, GB and if your single image is coming up to 10 GB, then that's not a good sign. So let's uh, quickly jump into uh, into our uh, into our code in a second, but basically the final summary I would say until we can all afford greater than 24 GB, we will have to find a way to manage our images. And the way I do that is by working with smaller batches. Like I take I take my image. Most of the time I work with uh, either 
uh, semantic segmentation or like generative adversarial networks either way i take a large image crop them into smaller sizes and then find uh, tricky ways of blending them back together to create a larger image please watch my tutorial on smooth blending how we can actually blend those into large images so let's jump into uh, a few lines of python code just to see do the same calculation instead of by hand just you know writing a function and I will share this code with you, so don't worry about uh, writing things down right now. As usual, go and look at uh, my GitHub uh, link down in the description. Okay, first, uh, let's go ahead and import the required libraries. Again, nothing tricky here. We are just importing the VGG16 model from our Keras.applications. Everything else is just pretty much straightforward. So once we do that, let us define our input shape as 256 by 256 by 3 for our first scenario. And when we are importing VGG16, let's not do the top. No dense layers, only the convolution. If you want, you can include that to get a much better estimate. Since I did my calculations without the top, I that's exactly why I chose to do that, okay? And with this input shape. So let's go ahead and print our model summary. Okay, so this is basically the same representation I showed you earlier as part of my presentation. So the input is 256, 256, 3, and then everything else, you see 64 filters, 64 filters all the way down with 14.7 million trainable parameters. And for each of these, we have to extract this, multiply 256 times 256 times 64 times 4, because we are using our floating point, right? I mean, uh, float 32, which means 4 bytes. And that's it. And we do that for all of these and add them. And this function basically does exactly that. And remember some of these, like for example, the input layer is a list. All of these are tuples. So I just put like an if condition. If my output shape is a list, then go ahead and do something. Look at this code at your own time. Nothing, again, this is pretty straightforward. So our function takes batch size and the model as inputs, yeah? Uh, in fact, you can define a function including uh, input image shape, but I kept it outside. Okay, so let's uh, in initialize our memory feature memory, which is the amount of memory that is required to store our features. And also we have amount of memory that's required to store parameters. Yeah, two things. So first let's calculate the features and I uh, float bytes is four. I think if it is float 64, the number of bytes is eight. So you can you can change that uh, depending on uh, depending on your model. Okay, so for each of the layers in the model.layers, model.layers returns each of these, right? So for each of these, extract the layer and layer is an object. So layer dot out shape, output shape gives you the shape of this output right there. And we are just taking that output shape and multiplying each of these values right there, 256 times 256 times 64. And then I multiply that by four to convert that into bytes and divide it by 1024 squared to convert that into megabytes. That's it. And then I'm printing the values. And for trainable parameters, like if you, for the parameters, uh, in my model, I have all parameters as trainable. In some models you have uh, trainable and non-trainable. So let's go ahead and add them. So we are going to add those and multiply those by four and divide by 1024 squared to convert that to megabytes. And finally, we just add everything. And by the way, the batch size get multiplied only with features and not with parameters because this number of parameters, it does not depend upon your batch size. Your batch size can be anything. There are same number of trainable parameters all the time. So this doesn't scale uh, with batch size, but your features do, right? I mean, if your batch size is larger, you have more features. So that's why I'm multiplying batch size only with features right there. And I'm dividing finally everything to 10 by 1024. So I get a good idea uh, in gigabytes. And remember you have, uh, this is the minimum, right? I mean, this is what you need to have on top of that. You may have some overhead coming from other things that I'm not including that here. So let's go ahead and calculate this for a batch size of 16 with our VGG16 model. And I have a few print statements that you can comment if you don't like them, but let's go ahead and run this entire thing one time. Okay, so in this model, again, these are the outputs like 0.75, 16, 16, 4, 8, 8. This is exactly what I showed you earlier. If there is, yeah, right there. 0.75, 16, 16, 4, 8, 8. And when you add all of these, you get 76 megabytes, right? So when we add all of these, I got 1.2 gigabytes. Why? Because uh, our batch size is 16 times 76 is pretty close to 1.2 gigs right there. 
So that's how much memory is required to hold the features and to hold the parameters, it's only 56 megabytes. So when you add these two, you need 1.24 for, uh, for, for this size image, 256, 256.3. Now let's change this to 1024, 1024 and run pretty much the same thing. So now you need 19 gigs to hold the this data, I mean, to work with this for a batch size of 16. So if you have 24 GB, then you're probably okay then with a batch size of 16, 1K by 1K. But can you, I forgot what the, sorry about that. I forgot what my 4K resolution is. 3840-2160. 3840-2160 by three. Let's look at a batch size of 16. You need 150 GB. There's nothing like that, well, at least not that we can purchase. So let's go ahead and change the batch size to four. Can I actually put four images uh, through batch? Nothing wrong with this because your images are large and hopefully they're diverse enough to show different things. Yeah, so let's see if uh, for four images, 37. Even this, unless you have 48 GB RAM, the uh, uh, GPU, this, this can be pretty, uh, you cannot handle that, right? So how about just one? I mean, can you actually work with one, batch size of one? Uh, yeah, if you have uh, about 10 GB, I think Colab gives you 12 GB of uh, GPU, but that can fluctuate. Uh, maybe you should try, if you're working with 4K images, you should try a batch size of one. Okay, so that's pretty much it, what I wanted to cover in this video. I really hope that you found this to be useful and informative. If so, please go ahead and hit the like button so I know that you like this type of content. Thank you guys. Let's meet again in the next video.